Hello, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Uh, first things first, please do subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps me out. And we're nearly at a thousand subscribers, which is really crazy for me to think about. <laughs> so I have a W203 um, Mercedes C220 CDI, so it's got the OM646 engine in it. So this, applies, this video applies to anything with that OM646 engine, so the E220, C220, whatever else comes with that 220 CDI of this sort of era. Um, and it's how to replace the thermostat on this. So you'll know if yours is bad if it's running cold. So the thermostat should be around 80, so in the middle of the gauge or just a bit above it. Sorry, not the thermostat, the actual reading in your dash. Um, mine, around town it nearly gets there, but on some long trips it was right down, it was sort of at like 60 odd, uh, close to the bottom quarter and I was really suffering with MPG because of this, so it affects your efficiency, it's not good for your engine running cold for long periods of time. So we're gonna change it. I've got the car jacked up and spotted on one side, that's gonna allow me to go under and uh, drain the old coolant. So make sure you have suitable drain in place. I'll show you where the drain plug is, but I'm not gonna show you me draining it and all that, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, there's a cat there. <laughs> so, open the bonnet. Put it into service mode by clicking the little red tab over here. While pushing up, crack the coolant uh, reservoir cap off. Mine isn't hot, but I'm still doing this just to be safe. Yeah, there we go. Now you're ready to start draining the coolant. So I'll go underneath. I'll uh, you need to take the skid plate off. So there's um, basically the big plastic plate underneath. There's loads of eight millimeter um, bolts around it. Well, it's kind of more like a screw, but has a eight millimeter head on it. Um, take them off, drop it down, move it out of the way, and then you can get to the radiator drain, which I'll show you in a minute. Just as a side note, you're going to need uh, blue coolant for these cars. They should run on blue coolant. I've gone for uh, comma G48. I believe it, when I looked at the standards on the back, it hits the required standards. It seemed really efficient. It's like sort of a new technology. and. I actually managed to get some of the concentrate for it to dilute it myself because it's, it's not quite as easy but it was like 15 quid whereas the ready mix stuff five liters is 20 odd quid and you'll probably need another bottle of that because it takes around six liters this so so yeah um i'll show you that when we get to it and i'll show you what tools you need to actually change the thermostat as well when we get to it so i'm just gonna take the skid plate off and then i'll show you the radiator drain okay so i've taken the under tray off and the radiator drain is under here so if you're looking at the front of the car you go under to the right and then let me just angle the screen to make sure you can see just this red thing here and you can either grip it or you can put a flathead screwdriver into it and turn it you don't have to remove it fully you just turn it until coolant flows out um, so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna put something underneath to catch coolant and then do that okay so the coolant is draining into that I'm just going to let it for a minute and what I'm gonna do in that time is once again beg for sponsorship from Monster Energy <laughs> yeah, let that drain and we'll do the next step. Okay, so that finished draining. Um, what I did was I've just put a few jugs full of water through it just to kind of flush out any sort of uh, deposits or silicates or anything left in the uh, the sort of cooling system, any of the cooling valleys in the car or anything like that. Um, you can put a nose pipe on it and really blast it through for ages, but the colour of this coming out doesn't look too bad and it's, it's not been neglected, it's not rusty coming out, you know, it's... I don't think it's been done in our ownership, but uh, it's definitely not been neglected forever. So a few jugs of water through it, just get the rest out, should be all right. I'm just going to go back underneath and tighten up the um, radiator drain there, make sure it's really tightened up. And then dispose of the coolant in the correct manner for wherever you are. So I'll take it somewhere to the local tip or something in a sealed container. And then we can crack on with the actual thermostat. Just a quick note as well, the actual tab on the plastic drain hose to put a flathead in is huge so unless you have a huge flathead um, I ended up using something like this um, or some mole grips you can use anything like that just be careful don't squeeze it too hard but just got these around to give it a bit of purchase and I'm just going to nip it up gently with the same method okay I'm going to leave the car raised because um, I can't put the other tray back on yet just in case there's any little dribbles of coolant coming out from the where the thermostat is so next step take your engine cover off so the thermostat is this thing here you can tell because this radiator hose goes into it you've got the little secondary one coming off going to the expansion tank um, so yeah it's just here so 
looks quite tucked away but really it's not too bad all I'm going to do is take this engine cover bracket off these are all the reverse torques that ease I'll confirm the size for them all in a second so take this one off take this bracket off which mine doesn't have a bolt at the bottom so that's good <laughs> um, I think it just I don't think it does too much it's just a bracket so I take this off um, take the two hoses off and then we can actually get the thermostat which is just a couple of bolts here so you're going sideways there is a sensor tem uh, a temperature sensor at the back so we just need to take this off carefully as well but I'll show you all this as we go through it so um, let me find out what size E bits we need and I will show you as we're doing them probably going to uh, just do a voiceover of these bits um, with the size while I'm doing them so I'll show you that so just start off by taking off the um, bracket for the engine cover mounting point here um, and this is there is a certain order to do things in so I've sort of put it in the correct order through the videos um, but I'll reiterate what that is as I'm doing it so it's a single E11 so just take that off and then we'll move on to the next step next we've got the temperature sensor so pull down right at the back of the unit um, towards the right if you're looking at the video there is a Bit of the tab that you can press down so press it down and with one hand and just slide the unit off with the other you can if you're really struggling put a flathead screwdriver on the front of it and push backwards just be careful obviously brittle plastic etc at this age but yeah should come off fairly easy so that's just out of the way Next up is this bracket on the front, so there's, again, it's all E11, there should be two bolts that you can see in the picture, one that I'm pointing out at the beginning, and then the next one, and then there's usually one at the bottom. Uh, you can take the belt off if you want to make it a bit easier, but you can also just go underneath the belt. Uh, however, mine didn't have that bolt in, so you won't see me doing that. But yeah, just undo these, and then the bracket will hang there, and you can't remove it until you've removed the hoses, really, so I'll just leave it hanging there for now. It won't go anywhere, it won't fall in anywhere. Next to the two hose clamps, uh, the main one on the top radiator hose is a 7mm socket and the other one is a 6mm socket leading to the expansion tank. Use a socket, much better than using a flat screwdriver. Then you'll probably have to use a flat screwdriver for the next bit to take the top radiator hose and the little one off. So just carefully put it underneath the hose, the rubber of the hose and on the metal body of the thermostat housing and just sort of uh, work it loose, just work it all around the edges, just prying it out because it will not come off without doing that um, unless it's been changed recently. But then you won't be watching this video. So yeah, do that, pry the hose off and then you'll see with a bit of struggling it does eventually come off. It can be really on there. Just be careful, don't break anything, don't go flying and you'll be golden. For the hose leading to the expansion tank there's a sort of solid line so you'll see I, well after initially starting removing the wrong thing, just remove the little bracket uh, and then that allows you to really wiggle and manoeuvre that hose out of the way. So just make sure you do undo that bracket or you're going to bend the solid line. So now you can actually start to remove the thermostat itself. So this is, well, I thought it was really awkward. Um, access is from the side, but as you can see, you've got fuel lines in the way, you've got the oil filter housing in the way, you've got the fuel pressure regulator, or fuel pressure sensor, sorry, um, plug in the way, which I ended up removing as well. So yeah, it's quite awkward to get in at the side. Different uh, combination of sockets, my electric ratchet, um, and you know you could probably use a universal joint in here just to give yourself a bit more leverage which i'm just thinking of in hindsight and uh, different lengths of extension so you can get in at the right place it is awkward but just persevere use your e11 use your tools and you'll be fine and then you can you've got the thermostat loose just don't drop any of the bolts they're not captive so back them out fully while applying pressure into them so they're spinning in place and then pick them out with either pliers or your hand um, you know dexterity so yeah once you've got it off then yeah, you can start to wiggle it out. Okay, so as always, compare the old parts to the new. So this is the new part. This is the old part. As you can see, they match up. The only thing is, I didn't realise it didn't come with a new temp sensor, so hopefully that isn't the issue. <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to transfer that over. And actually, this isn't threaded. 
to accept that bracket, so that's interesting. I've come to find out this is actually pretty common, so yeah, just cut a thread in, put the ball in uh, square, wind it in a bit, wind out a few turns, clear the debris, rinse and repeat. We'll see if we can kind of cut a thread into that. This is a sec early as well, so it should be okay, but yeah, pretty, pretty disappointed it didn't, didn't come with a temperature sensor, but whatever. See how we go. Swap the server, so to swap it over, a little retaining clip here. I have to pull that out with a screwdriver. Drop that, obviously. Gently wiggle out the temp sensor. Clean it up. I'll go get a microfiber and clean this up. Hopefully, it's still good. Um, if not, again, I can just swap one of these over. I guess shouldn't be too much of an issue. But yeah, annoyed that I didn't come with one. Okay, so after a quick Google, it looks like these are pretty available. So hopefully, it doesn't leak. But uh, sorry, hopefully that isn't the issue, but if it is, then we can always just go get another one. So, just insert this back in, insert the clip. <coughs> okay, so that's on there now. Okay, so just going to clean the mating surface where the thermostat goes, just clean it with the old microfiber and there we go okay now you can see where the thermostat lives so it's just in the center of the screen now there we go so i've cleaned it up um i've cut a new thread into this with the bolt put it in and just carefully turn it make sure i'm square um, i don't know if it'll focus on that but yeah so i've got the thermostat bolts and i'm just going to put them back in so i wiggle this in and just reverse the order of operations so what was really annoying when we trying to wiggle this back in into the space and why I ended up removing the fuel pressure sensor uh, connector for a bit of extra room uh, was I kept seeming to drop the seal out of it which is really annoying because once it's in there it's kind of almost tight up against the body of the block so then you're actually struggling to get it back into the channel the groove where it sits on the thermostat housing so yeah really annoying just persevere with it and then just reverse the order of operations so tighten this up um, put your temperature sensor back on and stuff and then put your bracket back on then put your hoses back on um, then your engine mount uh, then your engine cover mount and then you should be golden why have they made that such a ball look? right so once it's in pull your screws in tighten them up tell you what that's really awkward to do because those bolts are really awkward to get to um, bit of a crap placement really from Mercedes there um, yeah, not ideal. So, done that. Kind of just had to put a few of them in blind and yeah, hope they were, hope they were all right. <laughs> I think one of these goes this side of the, where the bracket's going to go and the other goes the other side, but um, figure that out. So, just plug the temperature sensor back in at the back. All right, and then we'll just start plugging everything back in. So, put this one on. Ooh. Put the, the big boy on. Took a little bracket off just down here, just to enable me to move this hard pipe out of the way. So I'm just going to put that back on as well. Okay, that's back in. Um, points to note, make sure your um, thermostat comes with a temperature sensor if you want to change it out. I'd highly recommend you do. Mine didn't, which I thought it would. Um, well, there you go. They're about 20 quid for a Bosch one, so I'd get an OE, um, OE one from Bosch. So I'm gonna see if mine's fine, um, if that's fixed probably. If not, I'll change that as the next protocol. call. Didn't have any codes for any sensors, so hopefully shouldn't be an issue. But um, yeah, you can change it without changing the entire thermostat, so shouldn't be an issue. Um, so I've connected everything back up. Um, it's just a bit awkward. You've got to do everything in the right order. So put the bracket on the front of the engine in first, then sort of put all the hoses and stuff back in. Cool, as you can't get to the bracket properly. Um, I've seen people do it where they take off the belt, but I didn't want the added hassle of doing that. So everything's connected up. I'm going to start filling the coolant um, and we'll monitor for leaks before I put the other tray back on and call it a day. Okay, so in the car, ignition on, um, turn the 
heat to the maximum fans to the lowest start filling. Um, just get your ratio right on the cooling of course. Um, I've done a calculation so basically I'm going to use all of this and the rest with water and it should be good for about minus 10 so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to dump some water in first to make sure it isn't leaking before I waste the cooler that's more expensive than the water. Seems fine. Let's fill it up with coolant. Okay, so we're back the next day because the lighting started to fade, uh, just for the conclusion. So the bleeding procedure on this, once you've filled it up uh, to the top of the reservoir, when you look inside, I'll show you, there's a little um, little mark visible and you just cover up to that. So the bleeding procedure for this is um, basically fill it up to that level, which I'll show you in a second. <coughs> Run the car up to temperature, it can take a while because um, it's an old diesel. Uh, it takes a while to heat up, so run it up to temperature, and when it gets up to temperature, the thermostat should open and allow the coolant through the rest of the car and all the cooling ch uh, channels and valleys. However, for me, it just wouldn't get right up to the right temperature. It was just below where the thermostat opened, so I had to just take it down the street and back. Stay really local, of course, because you'll it'll gulp some coolant and you'll have to top it up. So I just went down to the bottom of the street, um, giving it some revs, back up, and then the coolant had flown through the rest of the uh, channel and it had drank a lot of the coolant so I just topped it back up with the heating all full at all times as well to keep it going through all the heater core and I did that so basically start the car get it up to temperature while you've got the reservoir full um, let the thermostat open and then it'll be through the rest of the car and then top up again to the correct temperature and just keep checking it over the next few days just to make sure it hasn't gone too low but I'll show you how you can see when the thermostat's open as well I need to actually top a tiny bit up, but if you see in there, you see that little plastic bit in, down there, you need to just fill up to the top of that, so just fill over that. I'll put some more in shortly in mine. That's the maximum mark. And so, when the car is heating up, you'll feel this hose coming from the expansion tank into the thermostat, where it senses what temperature it's at. To open it, you will feel that getting really hot, but the actual other hose coming from the radiator into the thermostat will not be hot at all so I was feeling it I was like it's really cold once the thermostat has got up to temperature uh, the car has got up to temperature and the thermostat opens which I had to achieve by driving down the street and back then this will start to get hot really quick and you can then begin to you know squeeze this let's let some air out blah blah and that's when it's all through the system and so then my coolant level dropped right down to like nearly the bottom I got a coolant message just saying check coolant level and I just came back um, and you can open these up when they're pressurised really carefully if you have a towel and you just open it really slowly you'll hear it hiss and release the pressure before it opens but just be careful if you're in any doubt just let it go cold again the car and then just top it up after that um, you know it doesn't make a difference but yeah so just top it back up and then you're done and that is the car bled pretty easy you don't have to have bleed screws and everything um, must remember to put some in there and that's basically it, and that is your thermostat changed. So, if that helped you out at all, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We're near a thousand subscribers. The more subscribers I get, and um, when I get monetized and whatnot, we can put out better content for you guys as well. So, there'll be different cars, um, there'll be different content on this car, you know, more money to spend on the car, etc. So, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if there's any videos you want me to do. Thank you.